How did Spider-Man comics change after Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, John Romita Sr. and Gil Kane's original 100 issue run? Despite the obligatory cliffhanger, issues 99 and 100 gave a powerful sense of closure for Peter Parker's story. All the major themes were highlighted and given a climax. In 28 issues, we got to see Peter Parker finish high school, where his first love was. In 30, 40 issues, we saw him go through freshers and make his first real friends. And in the last 30 issues, we saw Peter Parker fed up of his life, but at the same time not able to let go of the maturity he developed and is eventually rewarded with the love of his life. In relations to the big picture biographical storytelling, the pieces were set for Peter Parker to enter his 30s. He had a stable job now, a secure domestic life, and a less angry demeanor. So to continue the story without allowing him to reach his next threshold would be to disrupt this biographical momentum and hysterically enough issue 101 immediately acknowledges this when peter barker wakes up with four arms after trying to cure himself he says that's it peter think you become a character in a tale by kafka and you've got to give this little saga a happy ending When Peter calls Gwen to tell her he's skipping town, she just seems defeated by how this is all happening once again. Peter then takes refuge in Dr. Connor's Southampton safe house, then encounters Morbius. Lizard then shows up, they then use Morbius' enzyme to create a cure, Morbius wants it, but the conflict seems to kill him. Peter stands with self-doubt once again over his intentions. Connor's comforts him. Spider-Man's plan to cure himself of his responsibility in order to maturely commit to Gwen has backfired, so everything is just sort of back to usual. In the following two-parter with Kazar and Craven, JJ wants pictures in the jungle, and in a pervy way gets Gwen to go with a bikini to sell the story. After the whole scuffle and fight, JJ feels horribly guilty over the possible death of Peter Parker. He hugs Gwen, is in tears. But then Peter Parker shows up, everyone's happy. These issues are very fun and hits all the expected thresholds of what Spider-Man's story is formulated by, but the way it's used feels way more settled than advanced. There's no mention of Peter Parker's intention to marry Gwen anymore, nor his desire to commit to a domestic life. He's just comfortably himself again. The status quo is just here, chilling. It's not until Stan Lee comes back that things move a bit. Yes, Stan Lee comes back for six issues. I don't include them in the original 100 issue run, largely because it doesn't really contribute or push the sense of aging movement forward, but instead it operates more as a fun checkup on how the supporting cast is doing and move things along in that way. It opens with, guess what? Another protest involving Randy. JJ even shoves a man in the face, literally. Flash returns to civilian life and Peter Parker is super cool with him. MJ flirts with Peter but gets pushed away as expected. Harry comes home from rehab and is in tears that everyone is there for him. Then Smythe sees Spidey unmasked with a new surveillance system, but Peter works around this with a rubber mask made from Connor's mold, duping everyone once again. Peter Parker, in contrast with how he's usually portrayed, is actually now the stable element in a cast of unstable people, who are all now dealing with an identity crisis, which is anchored by the fact that after everything is tied up with the spider slayers and gangsters, Peter sees Flash being taken away by the police. It's revealed when he was wounded in Vietnam, he was rescued and was healed by a high priest in Shashan. Later on, he tried to warn them of a US shelling on the temple, but they choose not to leave out of faith. Afterwards, Flash was blamed by the followers for the deaths and are trying to kill him for a ritual to bring the high priest back. But Shashan is revealed to be alive and has no grudge. Doctor Strange then just shows up after things get nasty and reawakens the priest from a magic mumbo jumbo thing. Flash has transformed from being Peter's bully to a victim of Peter's own bullying to a solid guy to now a well-rounded 3D cool character. Wicked blad.
The final issue is absolutely f***ing insane. Spidey is super pissed that he saved Flash only to know that he's fallen in love with Gwen and forgot to take pictures. He then meets Martin Blank, a weird looking lad who's normally laughed at by everyone but Spidey is kind to him. Peter returns home. Gwen gets Aunt May to stop treating him like a baby as he rests. In his dreams, he feels deeply trapped but then goes to see Martin who's dressed as a gibbon. He wants to be Spidey's partner, but then gets laughed at, and as Spidey tries to give him advice, he ultimately dismisses Martin despite his pain and leaves. Craven is also just sort of watching from afar. On one hand, this is just Peter Parker's f***ing life, a series of ups and downs where progress can seem futile, but things will be alright. But to a large extent, as much as Peter Parker's life is a soap opera, the drama never hindered his ability to reach the next point of age, and therefore biographical stage. These issues I would regard as the beginning of an invisible cutoff point where the tight realism of Peter's journey becomes an impression of one, decoration for a man who now exists subtly out of time, floating as a mythological branded symbol whose growth isn't about stages but steps. Steps that aren't a straight line of improvements but are turning into loops. So how does Jerry Conway deal with this? Here's a hint, with lots and lots of tears. So this was uh, part four. This was supposed to be originally called part 3.5 because it's so short, but I realized to have the part titles different from the number displayed in the playlist would make very little sense. So here's a shorter piece that operates as a prelude to Jerry Conway's 50 issue run. I'm kind of fighting with myself over it. Should it be split into two videos or just one? But you know, that's the problem for next month. Anyways, special thanks to everyone on Patreon. You guys keep me afloat.